In my hand here is the Cloner Alliance ViewLight AV standalone video capture device. They call it a bridge. It can also be used hooked up to a computer. I'll demonstrate that a little bit later. It accepts S video signals, it accepts regular old uh, AV signals, it even accepts signals from the little TRS mini plugs like this for audio only stereo connections. This is pretty versatile as far as accepting signals. I'll check out the features on it. That's coming up on Thrifty AV. Quick disclaimer, the folks at Cloner Alliance sent over the ViewLight AV capture device as a review sample. I consider review samples to be on loan. If they want this back, they can ask for it. I am not being paid for this review and all opinions expressed in this video are my own. Now I've uh, checked out some other standalone capture devices, but this one has some features that the others don't have. For example, if I wanna record just audio without video, this will do MP3s at multiple bit rates, including some high bit rates. Uh, also, it has a remote control. Not all of these uh, little standalone devices have that. And it has bundled software that includes, uh, it says, artificial intelligence to, to upgrade the stuff that you capture on this. I'll be checking that out toward the end of this video. But wait, this is out of the box. Let's back up and check out the unboxing. Looking at the outside of the box, it is sealed in cellophane. It's called the View Light AV, Revive Your Memories with Clarity, Standalone Ultimate Analog to Digital Bridge is what they call it. Next Gen Digitization, CVBS slash S-Video Capture, Audio to MP3, which is a feature not found on a lot of these, 1080p upscale, ultra low latency. Okay, on the back it shows convert analog to digital and the digital format seems to be MP4. Next gen digitization chip, they don't say what the chip is. Audio to MP3 recorder, I will be testing that out. Instant playback, uh, 1080p upscale and free AI video enhancer. That sounds interesting. All right, let's get into this thing. I'm just Cut the cellophane off here. That is an outer sleeve there. A little foam protection. Here is the unit itself with its little plastic protection around it. We have some plastic to peel. Oops, that wasn't a good peel. All right, here we have auxiliary in and out, an HDMI out, an S video in, and an AV in. There is USB-C here, 5 volt, 1 amp, 2 PC. The bottom has the name and the model number input, and it says it's been tested. It is made in China. That's for the remote right there. Looks like those might be speakers. We'll find out. Okay, let's keep digging here. Oh, we have instruction manual. Actually, it looks more like a quick start guide. I might glance at it. And they want to keep their customers happy. So here is a support card. We have one of these little power cubes right here. USB-A type. And we have a cable that's USB-A to USB-C. We have an AV cable. We have a right angle uh, HDMI adapter. We have a TRS AV cable, and we have a remote. The remote takes AAA batteries. This device can be used as a capture device on a computer. The QR code on the back will uh, take you to software that is bundled with this. To hook it up to a PC, you would use this USB-C here but I'm just gonna use the USB-C to power up the Cloner Alliance AV ViewLight Pro. Right now it says no signal and that's because I have nothing hooked up to it. I'm gonna go ahead and hook this S-Video cable up. Now this S-Video cable has a signal coming out of it through a DVD player. 
but I'm probably not set up for S video right now. So I want to go into the menu. So I'm going to hit the little house button here and the very left thing is settings. So I'm going to hit OK. Language is English. I'm going to leave that there. Underneath there is sources and right now it says CVBS. I want to switch the source to S video. All right. And when I switch the source to S video, you can see a little thrifty AV logo pop up behind it. And that is what I'm feeding into it. Resolution auto. I'm just going to let it do its auto resolution for now. Video bit rate four megabits per second. So our choices are four, six and eight. I'm going to go ahead and select the highest one. Audio bit rate 128 kbps, 192, 320. For audio, I'm going to stay at 128 for now. I'm going to switch that later. Uh, video in, volume. Uh, it looks like it's going 0 to 60. That's the video in volume, and then there's the audio in volume, and then there's the speaker volume. Second page LCD brightness information bar on or off. I'm going to leave it on auto stop timer. It went all the way up to 999 minutes on the auto stop timer. And then if I wanted to do a timer recording, I'll just hit start recording in that menu. TF transfer mode. Oh, let's go ahead and set the time and date. Then there's a reset to default and an option to upgrade firmware says uh, image file not found on the upgrade firmware. So you'd have to load up an image file probably on a thumb drive. So that is all the menu stuff. Videos. Well, if I've recorded anything, it would be available there. Pictures and audio. I'll get into those later. Now I want to get out of this little menu so I can just back out of it. And if I want to record this, uh, this signal that I'm sending into it, I can just hit record. And it says no storage device. So I need a storage device. TF stands for trans flash, but I call it a micro SD card or a USB thumb drive. I have a few trans flash cards, but I'm going to go ahead and use the USB thumb drive for recording right now. Right now I have my thrifty AV logo feeding into the view light AV. For this first test, I'm going to switch that out and load color bars and record color bars on this device. I'm going to be recording on a thumb drive, so I need to go ahead and plug that in. On the display, it says that this is an NTSC signal with the S-Video input. I'm going to go ahead and record about a minute of these color bars here. The DVD that I used as a source for these color bars was 16 by 9 and it is correctly formatted as 16 by 9 on this capture device. Before I look at the accuracy of these color bars on the Cloner Alliance, I want to point out that this SV2000 DVD recorder might not be perfectly calibrated on its analog outputs, including the S-Video. Now I want to switch over to the AV output on this uh, playback device here and see what the color bars look like on it. So I am unplugging the S video here and that went blank and says no signal. I'm going to plug in that and it still says no signal because I'm going to have to go into the menu and switch the uh, input. I need to switch from S video to CVBS. Uh, this aux here, that was that mini plug. The one marked CVBS is the uh, regular AV input here. And there are the color bars I'm going to exit out of the menu here. And I'm going to record some AV color bars. I loaded up the source and captured color bars into DaVinci Resolve. Right now we're looking at the waveform and the vector scope for the source color bars. They're slightly below uh, the max here at 1023 that they're supposed to be at. Everything else here looks pretty good. As far as the colors, they're all landing in these little squares right where they're supposed to. 
Now we're looking at the S video capture. The peak is a good match to the source. These are supposed to be sitting at 768. They're a little bit high. These levels look pretty good down here. Uh, some of these colors are a little less saturated than they should be. Uh, these dots should be right in the middle of these boxes here for the correct color saturation and they're, they're a little bit inside uh, closer to the middle than they should be but they're really close the composite video again these levels are good these colors are all within these boxes they're just a little bit less saturated than they should be now I cannot blame the capture device for this this might be the output on the DVD player causing these uh, these levels to be slightly off but even though they are slightly off they are pretty good and of course you can increase the saturation in post-production to compensate for any saturation loss we're getting right here I was real happy with the color bars that I got but people aren't going to buy the Cloner Alliance Viewlight AV to record color bars they're going to want to transfer old home movies. Well, here's an old VHS of the band I was in back in 1996. Don't worry, I'm not going to subject you to the whole thing. But I do want to transfer a little bit of this and see how the footage looks and sounds. Now, this videotape is 27 years old at this point. So I'm wondering if... Uh, the little line I'm seeing through the middle of this has something to do with the age of the tape. You can see that line through the middle here, but it does clear up later in the footage, so I think it has something to do with the source tape being pretty old. Also, the aspect ratio switched over to 16 to 9 instead of being the original 4 to 3, so I might correct that in post for the rest of this footage. Of course, that was an amateur recording using a VHS camcorder back in 1996. Looking at the media information for the Cloner Alliance Viewlight AV, the file that was created is an MPEG-4. The overall bitrate is just over 8,000 kbps, which is where I had it set. The video codec is AVC. The video bitrate is uh, just under 8,000 kbps. It is upscaling to 1080p with an aspect ratio of 16 to 9. The frame rate is 29.97, which matches the original NTSC signal. Color space is YUV. Chroma subsampling is 420. Bit depth is 8, and it is progressive scan. So when capturing interlaced footage, it will convert it to progressive scan. Audio is AAC-LC format. I kept it at a bit rate of 128 kbps, which is probably fine for that footage. Channel audio, left, right, stereo. Uh, sampling rate is 48 kilohertz, which is a little bit higher than CD. And it's basically MP3 audio with lossy compression. I am not really a Wii guy, but it has the AV outputs that I need to test out the Viewlight Pro's AV inputs. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this game. Oh, let me record. And I want to play that Star Wars game. Okay. Wow, this is kind of jiggly. Make sure it's strapped around my wrist, which it's not. Nunchuck to each Y. I gotta have extra stuff on here? Alright, maybe I'm not gonna play this game. 
I did not capture any gameplay with the Wii hooked up, but I demonstrated that gameplay could be captured with the Viewlight AV, at least with a Wii. So even though I didn't play any of that game, I was able to capture the splash screens and the little videos and the thing that told me that I need to wear the Wii strap right. The Cloner Alliance literature says that all of their devices are HDCP compliant, so you're not able to copy copy protected stuff. But if you've ever watched my channel, you know this is something I'm going to test. So I grabbed this movie on the back of the packaging. It says that it is copy protected. Uh, I have the S video hooked up from a SV2000 DVD recorder. I'm just using the playback features of it right now. I'm going to go ahead and hit record here. And then I'm going to play this movie, which I have in the movie a little ways. And it says it's recording, and I'm seeing something on the screen here. Here's a capture of the display from the Viewlight AV. It shows how long I've been recording, the source, the status of the power, the date, and the time. The capture has letterboxing on the top and the bottom. I believe it thinks that I'm watching this on a 4x3 aspect ratio TV. There may be a way to adjust this in the menu. I'm not sure. I did not have problems with my SV2000 hooked up to the Viewlight AV, but that does not mean that when you try hooking the Viewlight AV up to your cable box or streaming device that you're going to have as easy a time as I did. I have not tested on a cable box or a streaming device. All right, it's time to check out the audio only recording on the Viewlight AV. Let's do a frequency sweep. To record audio only, you have to hook up through the aux input. They did provide a little mini plug here, but because I'm gonna use a source that's RCA, instead of using the mini plug that came with it, I'm gonna use an adapter here and then uh, plug in the left and right audio into that adapter. Okay, now I'm gonna go into the menu and I'm gonna select the source aux. And while I'm in here, I'm gonna go ahead and boost the audio bit rate as high as it goes, which appears to be 320 kbps. I'm gonna turn down the aux in volume a little because this uh, this sweep is pretty loud. I'm hitting record. I'm hitting play on my DVD player. And it looks like I'm peaked out in the red. I'm going to drop the audio level a little bit more. Okay, I dropped down the audio input level. I'm going to go ahead and hit record. Okay, it's still showing a pretty high level, but it's not peaked out all the way. So I should be able to get a pretty good reference from this. And you can hear the frequency sweep going on in the, out the speakers right now. I have the waveform that I just recorded loaded in Audacity and this is amazingly flat. Usually you're going to see some tapering on this, especially in the low frequencies and the high frequencies. I don't see that at all. Let's zoom in on this. Look at those waves. That looks amazing. Even at these very low frequencies, that meter is steady as can be. It doesn't taper off at the high frequencies either. A lot of the buttons on the remote are the same as what you find on the unit itself, like the record, the snapshot, uh, left, right, up, down, OK, the little home, the back, and the volume down and up. All those are on here. But video, image, music, to access those on here, you have to go into the menu, but this has the dedicated buttons. If I hit source, I can switch between uh, S-Video, auxiliary for audio, and the AV jack, which they call CVBS. If I hit video, it shows all the videos that I've already recorded and I can play those back. That's a little bit of my capture of the Wii. If I hit image, 
It'll show any images I've stored, which the only one I stored, the only image I captured was my Thrifty AV logo. And if I hit music, it'll show the audio files that I recorded uh, that has the frequency sweep on it. I've moved into my edit room and I've hooked up the Cloner Alliance ViewLight AV to my computer and I installed the Cloner Alliance helper software that will let me record or stream the, the video coming through this device. I did have a little bit of trouble though. The cable that comes with the Cloner Alliance wasn't that great. It's fine for power, not so great for data. So I did, uh, I put, I'm using an upgraded USB-A to USB-C cable over here and things are working a lot better. As far as the software goes, you use the serial number on the back of the Cloner Alliance in order to register this. If you are using a micro SD card, also known as a TF card, and you have it hooked up to a computer, there's this menu item that I mentioned earlier but didn't really talk about called TF Transfer Mode. Now, if I'm using one of those cards, this light here, this LED's lit up for TF. And when I hit OK for the TF transfer mode, uh, I'm going to make a transfer connection. And now my computer can access the data that's on that TF card directly through the Cloner Alliance here. This does not work when you're using a thumb drive, with the thumb drive you need to go ahead and pull it out and plug it into the computer directly. When you buy the Cloner Alliance ViewLight AV, you also have access to the AI Video Enhancer. I've downloaded it and then I found some footage from an old VHS video that I did and I'm in the process of doing an AI Video Enhancement on that old VHS footage and right now it says upscale tile 29 of 1808 so this is going to take a little while it's doing it basically one frame at a time so I'm going to let this process overnight and through the magic of video editing you'll see the finished product now I'm now speaking into my Panasonic Omnivision VHS HQ camcorder. I'm using the built-in microphone on the camcorder and this is what you're getting. I was pretty impressed with the results I got with the AI video enhancer. It definitely sharpened up the features on my face without the artifacts you normally get with the sharpen tool on editing software. It didn't really know what to do with my shirt. Parts of it were sharpened, parts of it were blurry, uh, but it definitely was smart with human faces. So it's a good tool for that. And a nice bonus when you buy the ViewLight AV device. Now, it wasn't fast, it was pretty slow, but that's because I have an old video card, a GTX 1060, the newer and faster your video card is, the faster it's going to be able to process that AI stuff. I was overall quite impressed with the results I got with the Cloner Alliance uh, Video Light AV. This will now be my go-to device for standalone capture of de-interlaced footage. The S-Video composite video and AUX inputs worked good. MP3 audio capture was solid from 20 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz. That was very impressive. Video and chroma levels were accurate and it had good option for bit rates in the menu. I should mention that all of my sources that I tested were NTSC, all my video sources. That is the North American Broadcast Standard. If you're in Europe and you're capturing PAL, I did not test any of that. Uh, someone in Europe probably needs to test that with this device. It says it's compatible, I just couldn't test it. I do have a few nitpicks. The aspect ratio of the output file is always widescreen, 16 to 9. Most standard definition sources that you're going to feed into it are going to be a 4 to 3 aspect ratio. So that causes videos to look stretched horizontally. Uh, 
I would like to see an aspect ratio option in the menu if they could add that. And as good as audio capture was, uh, a lossless option like a WAV file instead of an MP3 file would make it even better. The USB cable that came with it is fine for powering up the unit, but I had trouble uh, using it as a data, ca data cable on my computer. Uh, I had success once I switched that cable out with a, a better one, a higher dollar one really. And if there's something else you want me to test on here, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, there is an affiliate link in the description, maybe two. Uh, if you use these links, Thrifty AV earns a small commission at no additional charge to you. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel. And remember, stay thrifty, everyone.